you're doing all right, I'm Jan. Watching the two minute preview of this movie definitely made it look like a type of yucky, yammering yawners you go to let's review this crap for. I'm surprised to say that this movie was not at all what I expected. Released in 1985 by Questar, you can tell right away that Conrad is a made for TV movie. Here comes a van with discount Luigi. Um, what's with all the blue? Boss is clumsy, but he's blaming all the other people. Now he's delivering a very large box. Oh wow, this lady's eating Cheetos dipped in chocolate syrup. Well, don't knock it till you try it. She seems like a lonely lady, only has her fish to talk to. Oh my god, I've never seen someone as an actual weaver in a movie before. Oh my god, his hat even has an L on it. It's me, Luigi. Delivery man confirms all of her info, then asks about the hubby, but she says he's in the Himalayas. He brings a package inside, insults her decor, then leaves. She opens the package. So many layers, it's like one of those prank gift videos. Then she dumps it out roughly, trying to guess what's inside. The inside has paperwork and a weird bag of goo. Holy shoobidoo, that's enough to give someone a heart attack. A voice recording starts to play, telling her to pour the nutrient solution on it. I love how the recording starts getting angrier. Oh lord, those effects. I can't tell if this is a horror movie or a feel-good movie. Instant child. Instant child? The boy reads a welcome note from the package. So, is this a robot or a clone or what? He says he's the first one to be delivered. Hmm, out of how many? He asks where his dad is and she says he's off in the Himalayas. Kid ain't got a stitch to wear, so she goes and gets a big coat and puts it on him. The boy says he comes from the factory, but says he can't tell her about it. But tells her he's not supposed to talk about it. Next, the mom's guy friend shows up and she tells him all about the boy. He doesn't believe her at first, but she shows him the packaging and he's impressed. But then he tells her to send him right back because she doesn't know how to be a mom and would basically suck at it. Dude, that's way too harsh. Aren't you her friend? Then she puts the boy to bed in her messy bed and she starts weaving a rug. She raids her stash of cash to go buy him some real clothes. While she's out, the boy has cleaned up all the mess from his package. She shows him all the clothes she bought for him, getting all excited. She fixes lunch. Ice cream with Oreos. Mmm, mmm. Her guy friend comes over again and tells her the boy is a marvelous science and wants to ask the boy questions, but he says he can't answer them. Then he says he can't or he'll be less than perfect and he'll be recalled by the factory. Talk about giving him a complex. But mom and her friend says he doesn't have to go back. The blue van is now spying on them and reports back to the boss. The boss is mad because the hubby is gone and the guy friend is there instead. Says the computer rated the family highly and says to keep spying and keep him informed. Next, the boy is going to the guy friend's house. He sees the musical instruments, but doesn't know what they are or has ever heard music before. Which is kind of weird. You'd think that would be part of a well-rounded, perfect child's teaching. Meanwhile, mom builds him a bed and makes him his own room. This lady is pretty darn talented. And also, the guy teaches him more about music and then they play together. The guy brings the boy home and she shows him his new room and he just loves it. Mom and friend talk. He's just in love with the boy as the mom is. Then he starts telling her how to be, saying he needs a father. She says the hubby's been gone 10 years and she doesn't want him back. At least we get some backstory on that. They're worried the factory will take him back if they think his home isn't good enough. The man says he'd give anything to be the boy's father. <laughs> the mom. How much anything? Well, maybe we could work something out. So they work out a plan to pretend that they're married but separated. He'd contribute, quote unquote, instant child support. <laughs> Funny. And worked out visitation times. At least he wants to spend time with him. And her too. The boy hears mom and pretend dad playing music together. Now they're registering him for school. He goes into class and it's out of control. 
In typical made-for-TV movie fashion, the bullies instantly start in on him. Teacher comes in, and bullies get into trouble. Mom has a client looking to buy a rug, but for her dog, and she's being picky. The dog don't care, lady. Walking home with his friend, the bullies come out again, and the girl beats him up. The boy asks his mom if it's okay if a girl protects a boy. Mom says as long as the person needing help gets it, it doesn't matter who does the protecting. Sound advice, mom. And the mom also says to stop worrying about what people will think or he'll end up just like them. Fake dad brings real food and argues with the mom about feeding him right. Boy says he feels like they're starting to be a family. The next day at school, the kids are crazy again and a window gets broken. I'm just saying, why is the teacher out of the classroom so much? Teacher says she'll punish the whole class unless they admit who did it. So the boy tells the truth. But the kids all get mad at him. The friend asks him why he is the way he is, so he tells her the whole truth about him. She asks if he's a robot or a human. And he says he's a human. The girl says she'll help him to learn how to live in the real world. The spies show the boss the kid telling his friend the truth. And the boss is mad that the family isn't perfect. The boss's lady friend says the computer messed up and sent the kid to the wrong place. The boy gets paint on his clothes and freaks out about being imperfect. And the mom says not to worry about it. The boss says the kid is contaminated and has to go back to the factory. The girl shows the boy pictures from her childhood. And the boy is kind of sad he doesn't have all the memories like her. So mom instantly takes a pic so he can start having them. So kind. The delivery man comes to the house to deliver a letter. The boy reads the letter. It says he was sent to the wrong family and he's going to get recalled. Mom says they won't let him go back. The mom and girl come up with a plan to get the boy out. Apparently, that'd be rolling him up in a rug and taking it to the dry cleaners to fool the spies and sneak over to the guy's music store. Then they hide him at the music store, they sneak back to the dry cleaners and leave the rug there. And the spies continue to follow them. The delivery man is back with a barrel. She tells him the boy ran away and he should drop dead. Making music again with the guy. Mom tries to sneak out, but the spies are everywhere. Mom goes to see the boy, and the guy friend says they should leave town. Employees are gaga over the instant baby and talk about buying it. Sheesh. Boss sends the blue goons to get the boy back, and the goons break in, but they don't find the boy, so they leave. Mom sneaks out in disguise to meet up with her guy friend, but the blue crew find them, and then they find the boy. Boss says the factory made a mistake. Mother. And will pay them for the inconvenience. She tells him to go to and stay till. She says she loves him, but they take him anyway. Oh, uh, there better be a hole in that barrel so he can breathe. Girl sees Blue Crew taking the boy away. You better have a talk with your mother if you think children were made in a factory. The bully. Girl and the bully go to the factory. And the boys at the factory to get fixed. All hooked up to wires and beeps. But absolutely no explanation. What in the fluff and stuff is he looking at now? Boss grills boy about perfection and the machine breaks. They're going to recycle the boy? What does that even mean? This thing's getting dark. The girl and the bully are at the factory. The boss tells the boy his intended parents are coming to pick him up. The girl and the bully disguise themselves as instant kids. The boss totally rips on the bully. Huh? You're the worst looking instant child I ever saw. Who would want anything like you? Mom and the guy friend come to talk to the boss. The boss makes the boy talk to the other instant children about his experiences. The intended parents come and hear him speak. The boy sees his friends in the auditorium, and the mom and her guy friend still trying to get in. The blue goons come out and parents sneak in. Friends tell the boy they came to get him out. The parents run around, a whole bunch of Scooby-Doo stuff going on, and they get seen by the blue crew. The kids try to get out, but they get caught too. Boss tries to give the boy to different parents, but he doesn't want to go with them. The mom gives a speech about the boy and love and being imperfect. 
Then the other parents say they want a kid just like him and lets the boy go with his mom. The boss actually hits the lever to shut down the entire project. Then he pouts. Mom and the guy friend say they're going to take the boy and his friends out to eat. And the rest of the instant kids say they want to go too. The mom and the guy friend decide to take them all home. Oof. Characters showing credits again. Like we forget who they are. You know, I'm really surprised at this movie. It had a lot of heart and even when it was predictable, it was still enjoyable. My favorite part was a message about how people perceived as unfit can be loving parents and suppose perfect ones are never really perfect. It's a message about adoptive parents not needing to be traditional or perfect. Love comes in many forms just like families. I don't care if he's a factory reject. I love him and I want him. Well, you're more imperfect than he is. Oh, so I'm not perfect, are you? I'm giving this movie one trash can, and that's mostly because of the degraded quality of the film. Like they filmed on the cheapest thing they could. This movie stars Super Mario Brothers Super Show Luigi. Hello, Kitty. Well, hello, Kitty. Hi, Kitty. Hello, Kitty. The Blue Meanies. And the Von Trapp family. This movie contains probably the only movie containing a rug maker that isn't a documentary on rug making. Inappropriate workplace relationships. May I ask you a question? <laughs> yeah. How do you like my hair? I liked it blonde. The fitness gram pacer test. And silly made up names for sciencey stuff. It broke the mooka finger anxiety monitor. Do you know what kind of anxiety it takes to break a mooka finger monitor? I don't know, a lot. The mooka finger anxiety test. The fitness gram pacer test is a multi-stage aerobic capacity test that progressively gets more difficult as it continues. The 20 meter pacer test will begin in 30 seconds. The second time you fail to complete a lap before the sound, your test is over. Start. One. Two. Thanks for checking out the review of this surprising movie that's more about kinship than science. If you like what you see, please kindly drop a like, sub if you're not already, and comment on what movie you want us to do in a future episode. Till we meet again, cuz... Hey, paisanos! It's the Super Mario Brothers Super Show! We're the Mario Brothers and plumbing's a game. We're not like the others who get all the fame. Is in trouble, you can call us on the double. We're faster than the others, you'll be hooked on the brothers. Yo, you're in for a treat, so hang on to your seat. Get ready for adventure and remarkable feats. You'll meet the Koopas and Troopers, the Princess and the